very excited to be here with you guys again. Um, so good uh, to think about the topics we've been uh, uh, looking at over the last little while. We've been uh, checking out this book by Carson Pugh. Uh, last week you heard from Bart talking about freeing up and I hope you freed up um, and spent some time thinking about what might need to be freed up uh, from your life in order to uh, follow God and, and uh, be able to uh, pursue the things in, in life that, that he has for you. And so today I have the privilege of talking about visioning. There's actually two chapters in the book that are dedicated to this. We could talk for five or six hours, uh, but I'm not going to do that to you guys because I know you would not be happy. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about myself to start with and a few things from the book. And we're going to do an activity today that, that may be, uh, not something that you typically like to do. We're going to practice some silence and solitude and, uh, and, uh, it's going to be really, really good. So I just want to pray for you guys and, uh, and then we'll get, we'll get to it. Lord, thank you so much for the opportunity to, to chat today. And I pray that you would just use this, uh, material about mentoring and leading that, uh, uh, uh Carson Pugh has put together and particularly around visioning and visioning for our lives. So yeah, I just pray that you'd guide our time in Jesus name. Amen. So I think that there's one verse I kind of want to center this around. Uh, God's been impressing on my heart. And when it comes to, you know, visioning for your life and and what what might God want me to do for the future, I think it's a great passage, uh, a great verse in a great passage. We're just going to read the verse, um, Ma Matthew 6. Um, and uh, I think it's a great formula to follow as as you engage uh, with God about what he might have for you in your life um, for different different things whether it's a partner whether it's a career whether it's what to study where should I live all these questions that we have um, so it's uh, Matthew six thirty three. seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need I think um, this verse is a great formula. Seek God first and his righteousness. Um, live righteously and he will give you everything you need. Um, so we're going we're gonna to focus in today on, on uh, visioning and what that could look like. And particularly this, uh, this idea of seeking uh, the kingdom of God first above all else. Um, I have a... Uh, a vision statement that's on our YFC website and it kind of irons out uh, the past 48 years of my life and, and how God's been shaping me and uh, this is what it says and I think it defines uh, me pretty good. I'm committed to lifelong learning, spiritual growth and service. I'm passionate about mentoring and coaching youth and youth workers, um, supporting them mentally, emotionally, physically, socially, and spiritually. I believe in the potential of our youth. I believe in you guys. I love you guys. I'm so thankful that, that I uh, can work with you and walk with you. And today, I want to talk about visioning for your life. What, what might that look like? And, and this statement that I just read to you, that, that took years, years of seeking the kingdom, seeking God, and seeing what he has for me. So I just want to start off with uh, um, a few questions that, that we all ask ourselves and, and bring, bring them to this conversation. First one is, what, what is my purpose for living? Why am I here? What will my mission be in this life? What am I best designed to do? What will be the vision for my life? Where am I going in my life? These three questions are likely questions that you're thinking about 
as you continue in high school and, and where God might be leading you. So I um, want to talk about how, how do we flush that out? How do, we, how do we get vision? And one of the things that he talks about, Carson Pugh, in this book, he talks about uh, some things that, that he gleaned from George, George Barna. George Barna is a social researcher and uh, a Christian. And um, so George has some things that, that uh, he talks about. If we want to get vision, we want to grow in vision um, that, that we need to be aware of. So first thing, get to know yourself inside out, number one. Number two, get to know... Uh, know your environment and circumstances. So be aware of what's happening around you, your family, your friend groups, the interests you have, school, church. Third, know God through prayer, worship, and reflecting on his word and principles. And fourth, test it. Test it. Get feedback from people you can trust, mentors, right? That's why we're, we're talking about this. And, and we want to encourage you to be visioning, to be looking, looking ahead, certainly enjoying your adolescence, but also looking ahead to see what God has for you, why he created you, and what, what are you aiming for? Um, so as you think about those four things uh, that Barna says, we need to start there uh, to get vision, and I, I particularly today want to focus on number three, getting to uh, know God through prayer, worship, reflecting on his word and principles, and I want to particularly focus on this little word that we don't do very well, particularly me, listening, listening to God, and and throughout the two chapters on visioning here, it talks about listening to God, how important listening to God is, and and so we're going to practice this. And before we do, I want to read to you uh, a, a story uh, from Carson Pugh, an experience he had about listening to God and, and how that began to direct his vision, okay, in his life. And so I'm just going to read this, this story. It won't take long, okay? It says here, it seemed a, a, like a rather silly way to spend the morning when I had traveled a long distance to learn about Christian leadership and evangelism. What the, the leader had asked them to do is when they got to this event to pack their stuff up and they went out into creation to sit in silence and solitude and listen for God. So this is the experience that Carson had on this experience. So it didn't start out too good. Um, I do love the forest, he says, and when I first sat down, I thought this little time in God's creation would be a welcome change. That lasted only about five minutes. The mind traffic began, and my thoughts began to scatter between some new ideas for, the, for my church and meetings that I had next week. Then I jumped to overthinking about my wife and our relationship, to wondering how our boys were doing and what I should buy them as a treat from the special trip that I was, I was taking. Wait, what was that noise? Oh, it was just the sound of a car. I wonder what kind of tree that is. We don't have those trees where we live. How much longer do we have to be here? Six minutes had passed. And his mind was going all over the place. I'll start reading the Bible. What should I read? But wait, I already read my Bible this morning. As I, as I flipped it open to any page and then glanced at the middle of the page. Nothing. Nothing is happening. How much longer? Seven minute mark. I think I should just lie down and pray. Yes, that's, that's it. I can pray for other people. There's always lots of prayer about. Now I lay me down to sleep, I mused. Oh, but I'm supposed to not supposed to be sleeping. Wait a minute. I am an ENFP on the Myers-Briggs. Surely ENFPs are not built for solitude. I want to be with people. I wonder where my other leaders are. Are they feeling like I am? 
Bet I could find another person who is dying to take a break from this solitude just like me. Stop it. Stop the mind traffic and pray. So I began praying. I talked to God for the rest of the hour. But wait, I was asked to listen. And I have been doing all the talking. So I stopped and for the next 20 minutes sat perfectly still. My mind traffic now stilled. I just listened. I began to hear some things around me that were new. I had not realized that if I had that if I was very still I could hear some traffic on the highway. I heard the wind blowing through the top of the trees. Then it snap, crack, pause. I listened to something on the forest floor that was on the ground at the base of the trees. I certainly had it was happening before I had noticed it. I was just simply too busy though to to hear it, to notice, to listen. Thinking this is something worth recording, I picked up my journal and pen, and that is when the thoughts, ideas, and prayers flowed from my pen. It had taken one hour and 40 minutes for me to come to a place of solitude where I could listen to God. And, and this is kind of how we are. We find it so hard to sit in solitude and silence with God and listen. And a part of visioning for your life, a part of... Uh, growing in in relationship to God is taking time to just sit and listen. You're not reading, you're not praying. You've maybe done those things and you just sit and listen for what God might be saying. And so I want to encourage you uh, today that, that you take time in your life to do that. Um, a couple things about greater vision. Uh, um, number one, it comes from the heart. A vision is always, uh, a vision is in some ways unreasonable. The heart knows no reason. When our vision asks too much of us, we should begin to trust it. Secondly, he says, we alone can make this statement. The statement needs to be recognizable as ours. It needs to be personal. And those who know us should be able to recognize who it came from. This is like a vision statement in, in your life. Um, that's what he's talking about, being able to record something like that. Um, it is a radical and compelling thing. Vision dramatizes our wishes. This makes it radical and, and demanding. Radical in the best sense of service rather than rejection. Our willingness to take a stand um, is what empowers us. This, this vision we're talking about is a, a, a statement of purpose for your life. And I think it's something that takes time to develop. might take several years, might take a few decades to develop. Mine certainly was in the process of developing for the first 25 uh, to 30 years of my life. And uh, what I read to you at the beginning. Um, we can look in the scripture and see God giving visions to people. Moses gives vision to Moses. He gives vision to Paul about, about what he is to do. And, uh, that's really exciting. Um, we, we see it all throughout the scripture. Both Moses and Paul had, or were provided with basic character qualities and training to carry out their missions. Despite Moses protest and Paul's thorn in his flesh, God used them and, and flushed out their vision. Um, the last thing that I, I want to say, and again, there's lots that could be said, but um, the vision quest involves the following questions. And so I want you to think about these questions. The first question, how has God equipped me? What are my talents, personality, experiences, and circumstances? Secondly, what ideals stir and motivate me? When I get beyond my skepticism, what do I feel strongly about? Three, what do my time expenditures tell me about my current priorities? What do my time expenditures tell me about my current priorities? Four, having spent time seeking God's direction, what do I believe he would have me commit myself to? And five, am I really prepared to commit myself to the vision 
it may require more dedication than I have given to anything. So you're going on a journey here today. We're, we're talking about visioning. And this is something that that is going to take time to build. And, and how do we do that? We seek his kingdom. We live righteously. And he looks after helping build our purpose for, for life. And I'm really excited about each of you and what God might have for you in the days ahead. Um, I have a couple questions I want you to kick around with your group. Um, and these are the questions for today. Uh, what is my aim and what do I want to be remembered for? What is my aim and what do I want to be remembered for? Number two, where, where does my vision come from? What have we talked about today? Where does vision come from? And the third question, um, when we look at the scripture, what can we learn about vision when we look at the life of, of Moses, who was very reluctant to lead, and the life of Paul, who had a thorn in his flesh, and yet he continued to lead through those challenges? Um, these are some great questions. I'd love you to kick around with your group. But before you do that, we're going to take... Uh, 15 minutes for you to sit in silence and solitude. You can take a Bible, um, but I want you to turn your phone off. There's Bibles in the building, um, but you might just need to sit and listen to see what God might have to say to you today. And then go back to your groups again with the questions. What do I want to be remembered for? Where does my vision come from or where should our vision come from? And lastly, what do you learn about vision from looking at the lives of people like Moses and Paul in the Bible? Have a conversation about that. Pray for each other. Um, hope you guys have a fantastic day. God bless. And, and this is a conversation, guys. This is going to take time to build vision into your life.